Hi, uh, good da, welcome, bonjour, ciao, also from my side. Um, the two previous presentations were super fascinating. I'm so, so grateful to have the opportunity to be here and to speak. So yeah, my name is Daniel. I'm an urban explorer and uh, an urban planner. And I would like to show you today um, my fascination about courtyards. And I research about them as in-between spaces. And would like to share that with you and also share how you can by understanding the different types of places around you, um, interact more with your surrounding. So let us take a tour through the cracks of our cities. Some of you may wonder, OK, why is he looking into courtyards? So my for me to uh, bring together my fascination and passion about them, I wrote a small poem that goes, what am I? People wander within me, yet I'm not a street. People find shelter and a community, yet I'm not a house. All that I am is what's left in between. It makes me wonder, what is it that we're doing in our ordinary environments? What is it do it that I'm doing in my courtyard? I walk through it, receive mail, repair my bike, um, or just having a quick chat with my neighbors. If you think about it, it seems a bit similar to a public space. But is it really? No, because it's an ordinary space, not an extraordinary. That means they connect to our daily habits and life and not trying to be a spectacle. But maybe first, what is space? It seems to be everywhere, from the blank space behind me to the space here, the room in which we have our talk. The important thing of space is you or we as people are relevant. We are the cause for producing space, adding diversity, making it a fluid and dynamic condition. I would like to introduce to you Georges Perec with his beautiful book, uh, Species of Spaces. Here he marvels about the different spaces, uh, even those that you might ne have never have thought about, from the page of a book to the bed, to the staircase, the apartment, the building, you name it. Ultimately, to space itself. He writes, spaces have multiplied, been broken up and diversified. They are spaces of every kind, every size, every function and every use. To live is to pass from one space to another, while doing your very best to not bump yourself. For his planners, though, it's necessary to distinguish, define space and its components to be able to add new elements, relationships, create situations in order to improve on the existing condition. So here it is. My courtyard really is relevant. It shows the struggle between the planners that are setting the stage and the inhabitants that are trying to manage ways how to live with it or within it. In my, for in in my courtyard, for instance, I really like that um, to have a small chat with my neighbors and to see how they adjust and adapt to spaces. Adding greenery, adding uh, small things in front of their houses. But what I really adore and love about, the, uh, about my courtyard is that on the ground floor we have a connection with several restaurants, shop owners, that are constantly like, uh, working below, uh, sometimes also in the courtyard, um, in the storage spaces, and you have like, small interactions, chats with them, that chats that I would never have without my courtyard. The focus on the physical attention of planners really is a virtue and proved effective. But planners have become close-minded. They have gone too deep down the, the rabbit hole and believe they can design and control everything. I hope you've watched this beautiful movie of Jacques Tati, Playtime which shows perfectly the trajectory that the 20th century was on towards simplicity, uniformity, and predetermination. Imagine living in such a city where there's nothing to bump into. Uh, these uniform, massive buildings with a big street, and you're trying to just like find your space where to be. As much as we wish for spaces to be a spectacle, we have to accept that they continuously change. The in-between spaces are part of this territory of spaces and only another condition. Just like here in the map of Rome, where Batista not only captured the streets and squares, 
but also the in-betweenness, the courtyards and alleys. Everyone here starts to encounter space in their everyday life. On our way to the bakery, to work, or, um, or just meeting people. With our body, we experience and sense the urban script around us, which, which makes us part of this chaotic and complex networks of spaces. For instance, in this example here, you have on the left side um, the street with some people walking through, not very busy, some shop owners going up, out and inside again. On the right, an extension where some people, like two people trying to just have a little chat together. Imagine being in that space, how you would feel, how you would walk through and interact. Imagine maybe the, those two people kind of look over to you and like you feel a bit, okay, yeah, they don't want to have me there. Um, our bodily presence and also like the presence of others interact, uh, shapes how we, how we feel in space. <coughs> the in-between we get to know, for instance, is here, is not often particularly pretty. It could be rough, untidy, cold, but at the same time, if you think about it, it actually is. It's honest, it's simple, it's personal. You can find a lot of things. With these first-hand experiences, we often have an architectonic perspective on the spaces around us. They have a particular influence over us since we're directly involved in it and cannot exclude ourselves from it. The in-between gives the designers context of how people are using the spaces because often these spaces are not very, like not created with a big design attention behind. For inhabitants, on the other side, it fulfills basic needs, for instance, air, ventilation, um, providing greenery, or just um, on the ground floor, as in my courtyard, a communal semi-public space, which creates a sense of belonging. Here, the spaces in between are backgrounds, backstage stages that are necessary to help the foreground, the public and private spaces to function better. For instance, here you see some, um, some entrances of Milan um, where people kind of like use them also to communicate with each other. For instance, in the picture below, someone announces that their child was born or share books together. Um, in, they can also be interstitial spaces that offer connection from one room to another, like a passage surpassing different thresholds. A good example here is again uh, our friend the courtyard, that with its sequence of uh, doors and corridors um, create, creates this passage from the apartment to the street and has different levels of intimacy where we also interact and react to either going towards our private apartment and we become a bit more calm and ready to be relaxed or we come to the street and we get prepared to go out and experience. This is a key element um, and allows the creation of different subspaces, pocket spaces and holes in the urban fabric. And each of them might create a character that surprises us. Another example is the vast amounts of abandoned or underused spaces, leftover spaces, which for us planners is treasures. They are amazing. <laughs> um, these spaces are, uh, they have lost their original uses or intention, sometimes even uh, aren't part of the economic or political processes of control. This offers them to become a stage for subcultures with their informal uses and um, that might not be appreciated elsewhere. For instance, squatters. But we can discover the in-between also on a more urban scale. I mean, I'm an urban planner after all. Here we can find them, for instance, at around regional or national borders. For instance, as here on the US or Mexican border, where at the border area, there are a lot of abandoned or uh, spaces that are controlled, but at the same time that offer some hidden areas where people then might venture to. But also at the peripheries or um, at, at the peripheries of our cities, new urban settlements form, such as American suburbs or here the intertwined agglomeration of the Randstad. Spaces in between are quite literally between definitions and objectives. Here, different characteristics merge and form something new. This blurry and uncertain situation is exactly what we call liminality. They are free of outside oppression and show the real faces of the people that are using it. 
just like in a so soccer game where constantly new situations emerge. So this stable uncertainty makes it so difficult for us planners to set them in any clear direction. We can only nudge or prepare. Those spaces are often used passive, left alone, until someone or something activates them and shows that they have possibility. If I want to inspire you today, it's definitely not that you have to become an urban planner. My message is less about the concrete spaces, but it's more about what it stands for and the sensibility that they come with that I would like to share. So they put us into an uncomfortable position of being between the known and unknown and help us make connections within our cities. That way, they open up multiple possibilities and obstacles at the same time, just like here, where with each step, your perspective changes and you're not yet sure in which direction. As we see, in between spaces share some characteristics that might be interesting for urban dwellers, you and me, but at the same time also for designers. The, they are individual yet collective by being subjective spaces that create a shared space for the inhabitants. They can be multiple or have multiple characteristics and offer a stage for different uses, especially when looking at their daily rhythms. And they blur the conventional definitions of space. They're left in a passive state and distant from the outside influences, just waiting to be activated. And they can be porous, so open for an exchange for some, uh, with the surrounding. So we should stop looking at cities in order to simplify or regulating them. Because they are complex. They can be something productive out of the unproductive or logical out of the illogical. Inside our cities, the spaces in between appear where we interact with one another and they take us from one space to another. We should embrace this condition of in between such as the breaks between meetings. Just like in Italy, where people are used to take a quick, quick coffee break in, in a bar or somewhere else and prepare, take a break, just, because, uh, just before they continue with their daily tasks. More so, these are places of resonance between people of a community or within a society. This is where we learn to connect with one another. As Richard Sennett says, uh, or argues for a more open city, I believe that within the city, uh, in particular the in-between spaces, hold importance for creating resonance that strengthens our communities. As urban dwellers, we are the activators of space. We're the users. We have to start being aware of that power that we have and propose alternatives, give meaning to places that planners don't see anymore. For instance, when we use our courtyards or the porches or in front of our windows, uh, and put some little things into them. You add diversity, you add a new layer uh, of how to live with your, uh, within your environment. On a higher level, at the same time, uh, they might be citizens that try to create more uh, new spaces for, that, that share some democratic aspects and occupy the abandoned buildings and open them up. So we cannot solely rely on planners. And I see definitely here a limit what design can do because spaces are more conditions rather than actual well-designed spaces. For urban planners on the other side, we have to accept this and we have to look for different interpretations and the unknown values of spaces. We should look at the disruptions and expand the horizon of what makes them, uh, yeah, of what makes them a part of our lives. In Europe, especially after the COVID pandemic, we're trying and we should try to find ways to lose our rigidity and become more flexible. There's an example in Milan in the last design week um, that had a beautiful, created a beautiful space um, in the storage spaces of uh, under the central station called Sochi, in which planners, inhabitants came together and tried to like open up that space. Uh, and they didn't try to uh, design it in a very well manner so that you would feel comfortable sitting in it. It was kind of rough, but at the same time, they, they provided this open space and let people curate it and say what they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it in it. So for a short while, it was a workshop for furniture uh, constructions. Then it was a space for watching football. Another time uh, in the evenings, everything was closed. They had a spontaneous gathering and had some beers there. And other times it could be just to discuss about planning. The beauty here is like that it's, a collective space and it 
kind of like makes the people understand and think about, okay, what do I want spaces to be? So finally, after hearing all of this, what, I, what would I like you to take away to your daily lives, to your city, to your, to your homes? Except of that I might be a bit too much of a city enthusiast here. I definitely did not reinvent the wheel here, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to speak here and learn more together with you about the spaces in between. What I would like to share with you, though, today is to start becoming aware and grateful for the spatial artifacts and spaces around you. Embrace the urban adventure. Umberto Boccioni here, in my opinion, captures this in his art beautifully, um, in, in that he shows how spaces is constantly uh, in a relationship between people and humans, uh, and city, sorry. Every city has their own notion of in-betweenness that in their own right influences the daily lives of the inhabitants and the rhythms of cities. When we understand this, we can change our way we live in cities by changing the environment around us, the ones that you've never heard about, that seem mundane and not really worth of much attention. It's these spaces guiding us through uh, through our daily lives, though sometimes they're forgettable. Take this enthusiasm, the knowledge that you make a difference, and hold the planners accountable. And planners, take the daily practices that are hidden in the in-between seriously. On a last note, I would just, uh, if you want to start, for instance, today or tomorrow here in Den Haag to discover the in-betweenness yourself, I just put some personal pictures that I took yesterday on a stroll. Maybe this, these could be spaces that you start venturing into the in-between. Thank you. <laughs>